Hi, welcome again. This time we're going to have a look at getting data into Power BI. And there's a couple of methods for that. Uh, now we've got an Excel spreadsheet that we can use for the KPIs. That's what we're going to use. Uh, so let's have a look and see how we can get our data into Power BI. Let me just move me down to the bottom right hand corner here. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Microsoft Excel on the computer. So I'm just going to type in Excel and load up Excel. That's good. So it's starting to load up on this side. Now, what I want you to do is let's just type some data in to Excel. So over on this right hand side here, if you type in sales person and then we'll type in the sales. There we go. So it's just simple data that we're interested in here. And we're just going to type in Janet, Jim. Oops, it's where I spelled Jim, right? Jim, John and Sally. There we go. And the sales that we made, let's say Janet made 101, Jim made 99, John made 108, and Sally made 89. That's great. So we've got a bit of information here that we want to load up into Power BI. So the first thing I need you to do is change this data into a table, and in that way it can be handled by Power BI. So let us do that. So if you are on the Home tab just up here, so if you click on the Home tab just up here, okay, and then over we're going to click on Format Table just here. So you can see the Format Table button. I want you to click on that button there. So we click on Format Table and then you can choose any color that you want to format your data or get it looking nice and pretty. So I'm going to choose this one down at the bottom, but you can choose any one. The next thing just to be aware of is in this formatters table box here, you've got this button that is ticked. We need to make sure that it's ticked. It says, my table has headers. So it's taking into account the table with the headers there. It's just going to zoom back, click on OK. And now you can see our data is a table. So one of the things after you've created a table you need to do is give the table a name. Now you don't have to do this, but you will thank yourself later when you're looking at it in Power BI and you're thinking, well, what's that table about? I don't know. So that's what we're going to do. So up in the top left hand corner here, oh, sorry, just going to make sure I'm on the right sheet here. So up on the top left hand corner, you can see, there we go, table name. And at the moment it's called table one. So it's not very descriptive. So I'm just going to highlight that and call this one sales, oops, underscore persons and press enter. I just want to emphasize that point there. So you see here it says sales and I'm using an underscore. And the reason being is this box does not allow you to type in a space. So you can either type the, it all as one word. You can just type in salespersons. Alternatively, you can type in an underscore just like I have here. So far, so good. So the next stage in this, after we've named our table, is we need to save our file. So let's click on this file save uh, button at the top. And I'm going to save it on my OneDrive and under my computer tutoring folder. You can save it anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. You can save it on your company Z or H drive, local drive, on your personal folder. I have a file called Muckabout and I've got Power BI here. And I'm just going to give it a name just at the top. I'll call this a one sales person. data there we go so you can see here I've got this called sales person data that's something that uh, yeah there we go so something we can save it so we're gonna click on save the data is saved that's fine we can now go straight into Google and import this into Power BI so let's have a look what I want to do is see if I can import this directly into Power BI without closing down Excel so what I'll do is I'm going to go to Chrome here at the bottom and then I'm going to search for my Power BI. I'm just going to do a Google search for it. And here it is there. I just see my Power BI. That's what, I'm, what I need to click on. So this one there. So let's have a click on the Power BI. I'm going to sign in. Hopefully it's remembered some uh, details. There's my email address there. And it's remembered my password. You would have to type your email and your password in there for this to work. Let me just maximize the window. So I've got lots of other types of data here, but what I want to do is get data. So I'm going to click on this get data button just down here at the bottom. So if you click on that get data button, 
Now you've got a various, a, a wide range of areas or programs that you can import data from. So you can import or connect to data uh, and there's different sort of app sources and online platforms etc. We're just going to keep this simple, we're going to import it from Excel. So if you click on this get button just here and then we're going to do this from a local file. So I'm going to click on the local file here, that's good. And then I'm going to, I'm already in the muckabout folder and this was the salesperson data, it's the latest file. In fact, if I go date modified, I can see that this is the one I want to import. So I'm going to click on salesperson. Ah, now it says it's in use. So I've got to close that down. So let me just go back to Excel and close my Excel file. And now I will give it another go by clicking on salesperson data and clicking on OK. So now that I've uh, uh, chosen my file, I need to know how I'm going to import it. So I'm just going to import it and then it's going to import the data so I can do charts. So it says your data set is ready. I'm going to click on view the data set and here's my data set here. I've got my salesperson from the top right hand corner there. If I click on the salespersons I can expand that box. So what I want to do now is I want to create a chart out of this data. So let's keep it nice and simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this button here. I don't know if you can see that one, it's a table. So a table just gives me a list of data. If I just want to keep it nice and simple, it's the list of data. So that's what I'm going to create just here. So I'm going to click on the table button and then I'm going to expand this table button, uh, the table visualization uh, ready to be expanded. And now I'm going to drag in the salesperson. So if I drag in the salesperson, I can see a list of salespeople. Now again, you might see that the text here is a little small, so I'm just going to make that a little larger. Just draw your attention to these three buttons. So I've got these three buttons. So first one, that allows me to put in and adjust the fields. So when I drag things there from the right hand side, so as you can see the right this here, and then I drag them across, then these are, this area here is how I can change and affect them and delete them and move them around. The next option, so this one here is our formatting. So it looks like one of those roller painters that you would use to paint a wall. So this one I would use there to change the look. And in fact, it's this in particular one that I'm going to use to change the size of the text. The last one is quick insight. So I can look at that if I want to have any sort of analytic features in, for this particular visual. I don't have any. So I'm just going to go back to the formatting one. I'm going to click on the drop down list for values. I go down and you can see there is the text size just here. Oh, you can see my face here. Let's just zoom back here. Just move me out of the way a little bit. Here we go. So you can see the text size just at this location. We can change the text size. So let's do that, shall we? So I'm just going to move that up and as I change the text size up, notice that I've got the size of the text just changes. I want to change the heading salesperson, that looks a little bit small, so I'm going to go to column headings and here's text size, so I'm just going to increase that. Great. So further things that I want to do is I want to add in my sales value. So if I click on sales value and I drag that in and then I can see my value sales so I can make different visualizations. I'm just keeping this nice and simple. Let's say, for instance, I think that is good, but I want to have a chart, maybe a column chart to illustrate this. So I'm just going to adjust the outer boundary of my visualization there. And then I'm going to click away. Now it's important that we do this. If we don't click away, then whatever visualization we click on over on the right, it will then affect this. So I want to do a new visualization. So I click away from the old one, ready to start a new one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I wanna do a column chart. So I'm gonna click on this clustered column chart and that you can see, so it's a clustered column chart that I'm going to click on. So if I click on the clustered column chart, I'm just gonna drag my clustered column chart a bit to the right here, make that a little larger. And I'm going to use, make sure I've got this selected. So while I've got the clustered column chart selected, look on the right and you'll see 
that the fields button and the options below reflects the custom column chart. You can see I've got axis, legend and value. However, if I click on the table over here, then I've only got values and it's a much simpler, much more rudimentary visualization. So let's go back to the column chart and I'm interested in the salesperson being across the bottom axis. So I'm going to drag salesperson down to axis and then the sales into value. So now I can see a nice column chart with the sales of each person. Now to be able to differentiate between each salesperson, what I'm going to do is change the color of each individual column. So how do I do that? Just give you a couple of seconds to think. And if you thought it was this paint roller button, then you thought correctly. That's what you do. So if you click on the paint roller button here, we're going to go down to and click on the drop down list that says data colors. Now at the moment, the default color is this aqua marine color, but I'm going to click on this slider at the moment that says show all. So it's that show all slider, and in particular, this bit just here. I'm just going to click on that, and that allows me to add or show you different colors for each one of those visualizations. So let's take the first color. Let's say Janet looks like she will be a dark purple color. I just have that feeling about Janet. Sorry if you're a Janet out there and you don't feel that you're a dark purple color. That's the color you're going to be. So I'm going to click down on this drop down list for Janet and I have a look and we've got theme colors. Well, I can't see, I can see a dark purple, but I want a darker purple. So I'm going to go to custom color and click on custom color and choose a purple here. And I can see that Janet here comes up as that dark or deep purple. But you know, I want it even deeper, even darker. So how do I do that? So if I click on this drop down list and go to custom color, you notice this at the very bottom here. This is a color reference. They call it hexadecimal. And you can go to other places and get colors. So after I've copied that color there, I'm going to go to the web just at the top here and type in HTML color codes. And I've got different color codes here. I just might do a search on Google and let's have a quick look. See, let's move myself out of the way here. And here we go. There's a W3 schools one I like to use, the HTML color picker. Down here where it says color value, I'm going to right click and click on paste to paste this value. Click on OK. And yeah, I can see that there's this purple um, that I've chosen. Just move myself up. But here's some darker purples here. You've got the 00044D or even 000333. That's the purple. I think that is the Janet purple, the purple of the Janet brilliant so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that here and then right click and copy it and then finish with this so I can close that down and I'm going to do that to here highlight right click and I'm going to paste and there you can see it's a very deep purple there that's ready to go just going to press enter on the keyboard so that's how you would change your color so see if you can give it a go with Jim John and Sally I'm going to do this with just a custom color here and choose Jim looks like it's going to be a bright pink. John looks like a yellowy orangey type person. And Sally, I'm going to go for a blue color. Let's go to uh, one of the blues down here. So again, there's our charts and uh, we've got different colors for our various charts, which is great. So what's some of the benefits that you can uh, you get with using this Power BI. Well, one of them is the interactions. The, the purpose being that if I click on, say, a column, I've just clicked once on this column and you notice that this here, you see, has changed. So Janet has 101 sales with a total of 101. If I click on Jim, you get Jim, 99 sales. If I click on Jim again, it comes back and I can see all of the sales of the chart. Okay, and vice versa. If I click on Jim here, I can see Jim in the chart and the others that aren't relevant at this time are grayed out. If I click on Sally, I can see Sally and the others are grayed out. If I click on Sally again here, then they all come back. So give it an eye a go. When we talk about interactions, that's what we're talking about. That You can click on one element on a column or a slice of pie or you can click on a, a table or a row in a table and it will interact with the other elements on the page. 
let's add in one more visualization just to really see that so this one it's called the card so if I just move myself out of the way here and I'm just going to zoom in over here uh, and it's this one that we're interested in it's called the card visualization so if I just hover that's it make sure again I click off off the old visualization if I don't do that then the old visualization will be replaced with the card uh, so if you clicked on that and you clicked on the card you think oh it's changed so if that happens just go straight back to the columns and hopefully all of the colors and all of the the layout and the way that your old column chart looked should be kept so I'm going to click off of that I'm going to click on the card and I've got the card just behind my face here so I'm just going to drag this up so what I'm interested in here is just knowing total sales I'm going to drag total sales onto card here I can see that there are 397 sales if I want to add things like I don't like this thing here at the bottom I want to add something at the top I want to change the text where would I go for that well I would go to the formatting button so do you remember the button over uh, here this wallpaper or painting paint roller looking button so I'd give that a click and I've got different options I've got the category label on if I turn it off I can see okay that's off at the bottom and if I want to turn the title on I'm just going to expand title and click that on and I'm going to type here sales there we go uh, that looks fine I'm just going to press enter and we can see sales there that's fat brilliant I should stop saying fantastic so much again if I say it and you think oh my goodness Simon's saying fantastic too much then just mention in the comments and I'll really put forth as much effort as possible to stop myself saying fantastic as often as I do we're just going to adjust the alignment I can adjust the font type here now the font types are limited within Power BI it's just to add consistency so people on different platforms can see that so I'm going to click on Arial Black that's a nice one there and the font color as well I'm going to change to black to make that nice and obvious and in fact I tell you what I'm just going to change the um, this is, is that the data label that's the I want to change the size to make that really nice and big I think the maximum size I've got is 40 so it's not allowing me to change any more than 40 so we try and 15 there nope so 40 it seems that's good okay brilliant so I've got my sales here but the beauty of this is is when I click on Janet I can see all of this reflected if I click on Jim I can see it all reflected there that's fantastic and if I click on Jim again there we go now if I want to see the sales of two people I can do that by holding down the control key on the keyboard so if I click on Janet and I want to see John sales as well I hold down the control key and I click on the John column and I can see the John column is selected there so just to recap if you need to change any of the formatting you would use the roller the paint roller if you need to change the actual structure of a visualization you would choose this and all of the visualizations work with each other that is unless you tell them otherwise for instance if you wanted to have a couple of cards so if you had a couple of cards and you want one card to show the sales like so and in fact I tell you what I'll do you can actually duplicate a card here it's probably easier to do so I can copy and paste so I did control C and control V and then this card I want to show the total sales so I click on this one at the top here and I'm going to the paint roller and under the title I'm just going to click here and type total sales and this time I want filtered sales so filtered sales so I can actually do the sales of the person or whoever I click on and then what I can do here is when I click on this I can then edit the interactions so I'm going to go up to the visual interactions here and click on this little section that says edit interactions and I turn that on so now when I click on this interaction here I can see little funnels you see appearing on these other interactions so basically what this means is when I click this the uh, how will the other interactions be affected well this one I want to be filled uh, so this one I want to be filtered because it's filtered sales so I'm going to leave that as a funnel but this one here the total sales I do not want to be filtered I always want it to show the maximum amount of sales so the way I do that is by clicking on this button here this no entry button and in that way 
it can it won't filter the total there we go you see the filtering there let's just give that a test you should give it a test straight away so if i click on janet so you can see janet's filtered in the table it's filtered there but the total sales remains the same i hold down the control key and click on john so i can see janet and john's sales again the filtered sales are here but the total uh, sales remains unaffected to turn off the visual interactions i can click on the drag down drop down list and then click on edit interactions to turn that off it, the interactions are still ed exactly the same except for you don't get those horrible filter and no entry buttons in the top right hand corner now if you've been following along you've seen how i've got this lovely interaction here and i've got this uh lovely table i can click on i can get some results going on all of this is from a very simple spreadsheet with just literally two fields in it one called sales one called salesperson but now i want to add another field I want to add a target field and then update that in Power BI. So how do I do that? Well, first I will open up my original spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna go down to the bottom, just below where you can see there's Excel and I'll open up Excel. I'm gonna open up salesperson data. So that'll open up my spreadsheet and this is it. What I did before, what I did was I uh, changed this or converted this into a table. I clicked on that, went to home went up to format as table. Please watch the other video to see how you should do that and the benefits of creating this as a table. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add something else in there. So I'm gonna add a target. So I'm gonna just click after sales and add in target and press enter or tab. And then I'm gonna add a target in of 100. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna type in 100 for this next one here. And this one should have auto filled it down. Actually, if I just came and auto filled it down, that should do the trick here. Great, so I've got this target there, I'm ready with that. So I'm gonna click on the save button and then I'm going to close down Excel. So now I'm back looking at the online version of Power BI, but I need to get the data again. So I'm gonna to go to get data. Uh, would you like to save unchanged play changes to this report? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna click on save and call this one sales persons report and click on save if you haven't already done so. So you can save the report at any time. So just going to go to my salesperson's report here. So this is my report, I'm ready to save it. So I can go to file and save if I haven't made any changes. If I've moved something, if I've just um, clicked on edit report to edit it and I've moved it up again, I want to save it. I go to file, save or save as, and I would call this one sales person's report and then click on save here. All right, let's go back to get data and I wanna get data, I wanna get a file. I want to get a local file and then I'm interested in salesperson's data. I'm going to click on open and I want to import it into Power BI. So I'll click there. So it says a data set with the name exists. You've already a file name. If you replace the existing file, some tiles might be impacted. Do you want to replace it? Well, yes, I do. I'm going to replace that. So just to see how the data affects my tiles, I'm going to go to salesperson report. I've got two here. So if I click on that, so my tiles are fine. I'm just gonna to go to edit the reports. But now if you look, you see on the right hand sides here, that I've got sales, salesperson, and I've a new field, one called targets. And that new field I can use to add maybe a target to this. So in fact, let me just move some of these around a little bit to give myself a bit of space. That's it. So that's the one I wanna add target to. So I'm drag target across just to this one here and if I make the wider here we go so you can see our target and again I can now use those in different interactions so thanks for watching please keep watch for more power bi videos